Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. And I've got a fantastic guest for you today, Carlo. And we are going to talk about um, entrepreneurship, mental fitness, mental wellness, coaching, finding purpose and passion. He's got an extensive experience in this area, helping clients. And um, I'm happy to welcome him to the show. So Carlo, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Chris. I really appreciate it, man. It's going to be a good episode. Yeah. Um, so I know you have a comeback story and so share that with the audience and we'll dive right into it. Yeah, of course. So, you know, my story kind of began before I even thought it began, you know, so I remember when I was a kid, I've always wanted to help people. I've always wanted to kind of leave my mark in the world. You know, I always told myself I wanted like my great, great, great grandkids to read about me in the history books. Uh I wanted to be as large as da vinci like everyone knows da vinci so i kind of wanted to be at that status not for like fame and fortune but because of the impact i had and i remember just when i was a kid all i wanted to do was help people and i told my mom the exact same thing i just didn't know how i was going to go about it now fast forward i'm 18 years old and i fall in love with fitness i you know i got bit by the bug i just discovered what it was like to be healthy, what it was like to have clean nutrition, what a good fitness plan looks like. And I just became addicted. Uh So as I'm, you know, falling in love with fitness throughout my early twenties, I thought it'd been a great idea to marry the two things I really love, which was fitness and then service. So at that time, I thought it'd been a great idea to become a personal trainer. So I got my certificate in personal training and At the time, I also started my own online personal training business. And that was, you know, right at the beginning of COVID. So I thought it would have been amazing because the gyms are closed and people still wanted to work out. So I thought that would have been a great, great combination. Now, what I realized I was doing is I didn't realize this until after my whole personal journey because I'm somebody who I consider a very high achiever. I'm very ambitious. You know, people often call me the dreamer. Like people tell me to come back to planet earth sometimes because of my outlandish ideas and creativity. But Uh I just remember being like to myself, if I can create this business, then that, that would be proof to me. I could do anything. I set my mind to, if I can make a bunch of money, that'll be proof to me I can do anything, right? If I could get the six pack, then that'll be proof to me that I could do the impossible, right? And it was so funny because I needed this external validation to prove to me that I was good enough. Uh And I didn't realize that I needed this need for significance until much later on. You know, it wasn't people, I needed validation from people or things really. It's just, I, I just needed this, I guess things, but I just needed this external proof so to speak, to be proved to myself, I could do anything. Now we're in 2020 and I feel like I'm having this identity crisis, right? And I just feel myself chipping away. And this is when I get to my hell week, as I, Mm -hmm. I like to call it. You know, it was anything that could go wrong did go wrong within a span of seven days. And I didn't know how to react to it. I didn't know how to respond. So what would happen in this week is at the time, this is right before Christmas, right before my birthday. And um, I'm not working in my business full time yet. I still have like the nine to five job. And I, I still wanted to be involved with fitness. So I was actually managing a gym at the time. At this time, I get fired from this job right before Christmas, right before my birthday. You know, it's it's, it's amazing. The best thing I should hear. And on top of that, in the same week, I went through a really bad back injury. I had a herniated disc in my L5-S1 vertebrae, and uh, it was so excruciatingly painful. There was a point where I just couldn't walk because of the pain was so severe. And then to add more insult to injury, there was this young lady I was seeing at the time who was head over heels in love. She was telling me we're going to get married. We're going to have kids. You know, she was highly invested. And when I saw that, I was like, okay, I think it's my turn to return the favor. I'll become invested myself. Well, she calls me within the same week and she's like, hey, Carlo, let's break up. And then I got completely blindsided by that. 
And then to top things off, the cherry on top, the business I had at the time, which was the online personal training business, was failing miserably. I was spending more money than I was making. I was going into debt. So within this week, I have no job, not making any money. I'm losing money, broken back, broken heart. And I'm like, what did, what just happened? Like, what did I do to deserve this? Why me? And I asked all of those questions and all these things are just piling on me one after the other within the span of seven days. So I was just like, screw this. Like, what's the point of trying? What's the point of all of this? You know, I'm busting my hump over here, trying to make something of myself and nothing's working. It's like everything I touch turns to dust. And then I started to grow very angry, Uh very jealous. And I started to compare myself to others and have these limiting beliefs about myself. Cause I would see these like stupid 16 year old girls on TikTok and Instagram and stuff doing these dumb dances and getting these brand deals. Right. And I'm over here in my twenties working my home since I was 12 years old, trying to make something of myself. And for some reason I just can't crack the code. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know why I'm not being successful. And of course, when I have this identity I held for myself of being somebody who is successful of being somebody who is ambitious, who wants to help people. I felt like every day that was not being reflected externally. It was taking a chip in my own identity. So I was like, maybe I am just a loser. And I didn't realize it until now. Maybe I'm a professional at this. And maybe I even told myself I was a professional loser that if losing was an Olympic sport, I would be a gold medalist. It was that bad, dude. <laughs> and um, it just, it, the, the self-hatred and the negativity and the depression just really grew and grew. Mm. And, you know, we're in 2021 now. And this entire year, I'm laying in my bed. I'm telling myself I'm not going to amount to anything. I'm not good for anything. I'll never be successful. I was at the the time living with my parents. So that was another reason for me to feel jazzed about myself. (laughs) Take another hit at my identity I had for myself. And I cut off communication with my family, with everyone I knew, including my parents who legit lived in the same house. I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't eat because I just, I had no appetite. I was just depressed. You know, I lost 13 pounds. And as thin of a man as I am, you know, if you actually saw me, 13 pounds lighter is kind of scary. And I just laid in bed every day watching movies, scrolling through social media, watching YouTube videos, playing video games, anything I could do to just not think because I couldn't bear the thought of my reality. Like I didn't believe it was real. And I was like, wow, I really am a nobody. And I couldn't live with that. And I couldn't live with this pain I was dealing with and all these thoughts I was dealing with. It was so bad, Christopher. Like I could not look in the mirror. Like I refused to, cause I just didn't like the person I saw. So it was no longer a question of if, but when I was going to take my own life because it was that bad and I didn't see a way out. And when you don't see a way out, when you're in that particular circumstance, you think clocking out early is the one and only thing you can do. And that's what I thought. So not to get you know too graphic here, but you know, I was at the threshold as I like to call it, you know, I was, it was about that time. I was at the moment where I was going to make that one decision you can't come back from. And I remember being there in that moment thinking, wow, my parents are downstairs right now. They have no idea what's going on. And I'm about to do this thing. And luckily I didn't, you know, I actually had a severe panic attack. I just couldn't do it. Couldn't go through with it. And it was still in the back of my mind. I was like, okay, well, it's still going to happen. I just don't know when. And the same cycle just replayed itself every single day. And that's basically what I did. Now, I remember this is in November of 2021, just before the end of the year. I remember my parents were like, hey, let's go out to lunch. Let's let's do something different. Let's get out of the house. And my immediate response, my default response is, no, leave me alone. I'll stay in bed. Well, eventually they talked me into it. And I was like, okay, fine even though it was very hard to get out of bed to go out to lunch with them. I still did it, but it was the most awkward lunch of my life. Like I was sitting there amongst my family, 
and I'm not saying a word. I'm just sitting in the booth eating my little salad, minding my own business. And then I remember my brother towards the end of the meal, he was like, hey, how about you ride home with me? And I was like, okay, sure. So we're driving my brother's car and we put the car in park as we arrive at the house. And this conversation, this is like 10 minute conversation, literally put me on the path to finding my breakthrough. And as my brother puts the car in park, he just looks at me. He says, hey, man, what are we going to do? Like, how are we going to help you? Please let us know because we've tried everything. We suggested therapy. You did it, but it didn't work. We we're trying all these things. You're not doing it. But like, tell us how we can help you. And I told him, I was like, there's nothing you can do. Like, if I found the way, I'd be doing it because I don't want to stay like this. But I feel like this is kind of like my destiny, so to speak. So I just told him to give up and quit, stop trying. But he couldn't accept that answer. And he asked, well, he told me, he was like, hey, look, Carlo, like, I am your brother and I would do anything for you. If you're my brother. Would you do anything for me? And I said, of course I would. I didn't realize that was a trap because he was like, okay, Carlo, I have a favor I need from you. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> oh gosh, all right. Well, what's this favor? What do you want from me? What's the catch? And he tells me, I need you to go on a trip, do something different, get out of here. You need to do something different. And I'm just looking at him dumbfounded. I'm like, do you know how hard it was to get out of bed and to go out to lunch with you guys to the cheesecake factory and now you want me to go on a trip like no i'm not doing that but then the next thing he said really shook me and it was almost as if time stood still and i was kind of like the only person in the universe and i was just sitting there like time was frozen and what my brother said to me was what do you have to lose and then when that question hit me, that's where I got that sensation. And I really thought of that. And I pondered that question. And I was like, really, honestly, at this point, I have nothing to lose. Like, really, I'm at rock bottom, not to sound cliche, but that's exactly where I am right now. So I thought to myself, why not take a leap of faith? Why not try something? And one more time, let's see what it does. And I don't recommend this, but my thinking at the time was like, hey, if this one last attempt doesn't work, I can still clock out early. That was like my safety net, my coping mechanism, so to speak. And obviously that's not healthy to think about, but that's just what I did. But as he asked me that question, I was thinking of two things. And this is these two things literally put me on that yellow brick road, so to speak. So the first thing I think of is I just keep saying to myself, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to go. And I just kept saying that to myself nonstop, just kept replaying that over and over. And I shifted my focus from the life I was living, you know, to the guy who felt like he was unfulfilled. He had no purpose. He didn't know what he was going to do, felt so overwhelmed, had these living beliefs about himself. And I shifted that focus from that to the person I wanted to be, the life I really wanted, being the person to help others and be an entrepreneur, make something of myself. And that's where I shifted my focus to. And then the second thing was I imagined I had struck a match from a matchbook and I saw this tiny little flame and this tiny little flame just sat in my gut and I saw this little spark, this little flame. I thought it represented the real me. You know, the Carlo who's ambitious, the Carlo who's funny, who wants to help people. And even though it was so, so small, the real version of me was down there somewhere. And the more I thought about this little flame, it just grew and grew and grew to at which point I felt like it consumed me and I felt like a fireball. And that's where I had this like energy just... I don't know, I just had something coursing through my veins. And then all of a sudden I looked at my brother and I said, okay, I'll go on this trip. And then he's losing his mind. He's going excited. He's like, okay, okay, well, um, where, where do you want to go? Now, in November, Virginia, depending on what Virginia wants to do, because it's a tricky state when it comes to weather, it's either hot sometimes or cold. Well, in this particular circumstance, it was a little chilly. So I was like, I don't know, I want to go somewhere warm. I don't want to go anywhere cold. 
He says, okay, perfect. Well, when do you want to go? And I said, soon. And then he says, okay, well, uh, do you want to go alone? Do you want to come with me? What's the deal? And I said, please come with me. I don't want to go alone. I'll probably just lay in bed every day. He says, okay, don't worry about anything. I will send you the details tonight. And that was a Sunday. And our plane left on a Tuesday. And we headed to West Palm Beach, Florida. Now, neither of us knew where West Palm Beach, Florida was. We didn't know if it was on the East Coast, West Coast. We didn't know anything. We didn't know what was down there, you know, what we could do. I mean, it's Florida. You can only assume, you know, go to the beach, do stuff like that. So he just picked it literally because it sounded attractive. That's the only reason why he picked West Palm Beach. So we head down to West Palm Beach and day one is miserable. I was filled with immediate regret. I was like, oh my gosh, why did I do this? Why am I here? Why are we in Florida? I should have stayed in bed. This is this was a mistake. And then day two, same thing. I'm feeling miserable. Don't know what to do. You know, my brother, he's trying to rent jet skis. He's trying to go to the beach. He's like, let's go on a fishing boat and just go fishing. And I don't want to do a darn thing. I just want to lay in bed in a hotel. I just physically, mentally just don't want to do anything. Honestly, up to that point, Chris, like the most excitement and adrenaline rush we got up to that point was we had bought a deck of cards at a pharmacy and played go fish in the park. That was like, that was it for me. <laughs> And I remember if we fast forward during that day, we're sitting in on this patio table in front of this cafe and we're just talking. And then all of a sudden I see my brother put his phone down and he says, Hey, I booked us an event to do. I'm not telling you what it is. Just, just get up and follow me. And I'm filled with panic. I'm like, what did he just do? Are we going to some nightclub? Are we going on a boat in the middle of the ocean? Are we going to join a cult? What's going to happen? And I'm freaking out. And he's like, just shut up and follow me. And I was like, okay. So we're walking, we're walking. And all of a sudden I, we're at the stoplight and we're stopped and we're waiting for that like little green crossing man light to go on. And I remember just standing in front of this big building and I'm just trying to pass time, right? If the light's red, I'm just looking around, looking at my surroundings. And I see this big building in front of me and it says it's the West Palm Beach Convention Center. And then I look at the sign, the like LED sign sticking out of the ground. And then I see as it reads, Tony Robbins, unleash the power within. And I look at my brother dumbfounded. Oh, wait, it was like, wait a minute. What did you just do? He's playing stupid. He's like, oh, I didn't do anything. It's, it's so funny because my brother and I are heavily invested into personal development. We know Tony Robbins. We know all the greats. You know, we, we've just always been involved in just personal growth. So it was so funny to see that apparently Tony Robbins is down there having an event. We didn't know he was down there. My brother didn't know. It just, I honestly think it was divine timing. At the right place, right time. Like, like we didn't know this was happening. So... My brother just Googled what to do in West Palm Beach, and that was one of the first things that popped up. So he jumped on the opportunity. So I feel like I'm being guided. Like, like I'm at this event for a reason. Now, originally, I didn't feel that way. But until after the event, then that's a different story. But I remember, and I, for anyone who doesn't know Tony Robbins and his events, when you go to a Tony Robbins event, you're in a room of 10,000 people. And I remember being in that room and sitting in that chair, and I was just thinking to myself, I hope this event isn't like a concert, you know? I hope it's not like a vacation experience where you're going to have fun now, but when it's over, it's like, okay, back to reality. I didn't want it to be like that. I was skeptical. Well, I'm so glad that from that one moment sitting in the car that led to one decision, that led to one action, I got out of bed. I jumped on a plane because that particular event was waiting for me. I was supposed to be there. And when I was there, I, it, it was like I had this telepathic communication with the universe. I know it sounds trippy, but like it was like, hey, Carlo, if you want to help people, this is how you're going to do it. There's a reason why you spent that year in bed. This is what you're going to do. You're going to help people who are dealing with this lack of fulfillment, just like you, who don't believe in themselves, have limiting beliefs, just like you did who know they're meant for more, they just don't know what to do, and they want 
to live the life of their dreams. This is how you're going to help people. You're going to help them shift their mindset. And it was as clear as day. So what I did from that day on up to today is I transitioned my business from personal training to more so life coaching, peak performance. I became a keynote speaker. You know, it was so funny. It like this whole story goes full circle because like last week I gave a keynote to my old high school when I was a kid. And it was so crazy. I've been giving keynotes to Fortune 500 companies and I've been helping people every day. And that's just my mission when I, when I wake up in the morning is who am I going to help today? And I can't even imagine, I can't even dream of a different life because like what I went through, I realized it wasn't happening to me. It was happening all for me. And I needed to go through that experience just so I can help serve people to the best of my ability. And I'm still learning and still growing and still, you know, just getting better and just continue to grow myself and in my business. And it is the best thing ever. You know, it's a crazy roller coaster story that I was on, but it was definitely necessary for me to be the person I am today. Yeah. Yeah. What a fantastic uh, journey. And um, yeah. Um, yeah. The uh, it's really, in- and I think the audience would be interested in hearing more. So how can they follow you on socials and check out your website and uh, so on? Yeah. So if you want to follow me, get in touch with me, have a direct conversation with me, I would love to help you. And in fact, I would love to offer a free strategy call if you're somebody who is, you know, dealing with a lot of lack of fulfillment, limiting beliefs, because I know what that's like. I'd love to help you. Just have a free conversation. Go to my Instagram. That's Carlo Taormina underscore life coach. And I'm sure the, the description is going to be in the show notes. But just let me know that you came from this podcast because I'd love to know where you came from and I would love to start a conversation. Just hit me up on Instagram. Yeah. And for all the audience, let's thank Carlo for coming on and sharing this inspiring story. Give his socials a like and follow. And thanks so much. Thank you, Christopher.